Well, I have a call here, but I forgot to hit record, so I think this will take two. I had just enough left in that hole there. Well guys, we finally officially got the fire going. And I'm going to continue working on some arrows today. Uh, you saw a video where I was uh, heat straightening some arrows over the fire, and that's usually the first step. I'll take an arrow shaft like this. This is a piece of honeysuckle bush. It's very common for me to make arrows out of this. Um, and all I do is I've stripped the bark off it at this point. That's all I've done with the flint flake. And I've heated it over the fire. And you can see it's very, like you can see it's very straight right now. Way too long for an arrow. But uh, I leave that extra length so I can really leverage it in certain spots. And you saw I made a tool for my... Um, for when I do my uh, heat straightening and that tool is very nice because when you get down to the end here say this is a piece of the air that you need salvaged it's really hard to grab onto a hot end and have enough leverage so the bone is nice because you can slide it right at the end there and leverage with the bone and it saves your hands and it gives you a lot of extra like I said a lot of le extra leverage so this uh, arrow shoot has been debarked up to this point and heat straightened over the fire so we'll continue from here and you'll see what I do next to take a piece of natural uh, natural shoot from the woods and turn it into an arrow so honeysuckle has um, <clears throat> these little areas here where it shoots off branches on opposite sides of each other and um, it leaves these little nubs or these little raised areas on the shaft all along the shaft and uh, if you get a really clear shaft with not a lot of knots or nubs or however you want to call it where the, the branches shoot out it makes for a very consistent arrow you can see it in the when you flex it um, but that's the whole art of arrow making taking a, a shoot and making them shoot as consistently as possible because not every every shoots different and uh, you can make an arrow out of them still but I like to um, I like to sand these nubs down smooth with the rest of the shaft first All right, so we just got done sanding our shaft uh, relatively smooth. We took out any uh, knots, knobs. We sanded it smooth to the re rest of the diameter of the shaft. Now, it's the nice thing about leaving these arrows long is you can kind of plan where you want to put your arrow inside of this. If you want to avoid a knot in a certain spot, if you uh, you can do that. It's good to avoid knots, and like especially by the fletching here, in case the arrow warps at that knot over time, it's harder to straighten that out because you have your t uh, feathers tied over it. But in this case, I can't really avoid it. It's kind of how this species is. There's always these little nubs where the knots grow. But once I fire temper these, this has been very consistent for me. It stays very straight, which is nice. So this arrow is already very straight, so I can cut this to my finished length. I don't really need to leverage any spots in particular. It'll take very little to kind of heat this over the fire towards the end and get it really dead on. But um, So I can cut this down to finished size. And I have an, all I do for that is I have another arrow here. And um, typically my hardwood arrows, I cut to about 31 inches. Um, that gives me enough play because I'm going to lose about a half inch on the to cut in the knock. And about a half inch if I put a put a flint point in to cut in my notch. So I'm down an inch already. And I don't like these right at the edge of my bow. I like a couple inches hanging over the edge of my bow at full draw. I draw about 27 inches, give or take. So um, that gives me you know good two or three inches and flexibility on what I want to put on the tip so I know I'm not going to be drawing this back and hit my bow. So about 31 inches is what I cut them on the average. So all I have to do is line this up. I got a knot here. Um, I can cut below that. That's my my uh, knock end. And I got a knot here and I'll avoid that too.
Now that's almost exactly the thickness I need for my um to cut a uh, string notch in there. Um, I'll actually leave this first half inch or so of that thickness and I'll taper down into the fletch, taper down into the final diameter, and I'll taper back out to, to the larger diameter. That gives me a little meat here for my string, and then I can taper down into the, the thinner area for the fletching. Now when I'm working with an arrow, I like to maintain the integrity, the integrity of the natural piece of wood as best I can. And what I mean by that is I like to reduce the shaft diameter consistently all the way around. I don't want to just be reducing wood in one area and not rotating this. So um, I know I need to reduce wood here at my fletching. It's not flexing. The arrow's not is very stiff right now. I know just by experience and how I shoot them, I need to reduce down here by the fletching. Then I have to reduce and taper back up to about, this is close to the finished diameter right here. So how I do that consistently is with a with charcoal. I do the same technique when I'm making bows and just woodworking in general. It's good to have a visual of where you need to remove wood and where uh, you don't have to remove wood. So all I've done here this area where I know I need to remove wood, I've uh, darkened with charcoal. So now I can see when I scrape where I've scraped and where I haven't. And I can consistently reduce the diameter of this all the way around. Now this is how a lot of my time is spent, literally just reducing the arrow shaft. The arrows take a lot of time to make. I might have as just as much time into um, making a set of arrows as I do a whole bow. Very, very time consuming work. Um, you're, you have to listen to the arrow just like you do the bow, how it's flexing, and as done by feel and how you like to shoot them. This is a very common sight when I'm working on arrows. I have a pile of flint flakes. These are all my shavers. Basically busted off of chunks like this. These chunks are pretty crumbled, but you could um, break off and get nice little blades that work good for scraping. I have arrows in various stages of production. If you scrape enough arrows, you end up with a really big nest of <laughs> material. The braider, sanders, this is a very specialty tool. Very cool, you'll see this later. Arrow wrenches, arrow straighteners. Alright, so I'm working away at uh, reducing this arrow shaft, the diameter, getting to the diameter that I prefer to shoot. And like I said, that's done through feel and how you like to shoot your arrows. Now, there's something very important that I'm doing this whole time and kind of determines how I reduce this arrow is I'm rotating this arrow in my hands. And what I'm doing is you'll get to a point on the arrow as I'm flexing it away from me that the arrow is significantly stiffer and actually kind of springs back on me very quickly in that orientation this arrow is very stiff right now and there's some contextual clues that you can look for too if you're just starting out doing this not every arrow is perfectly round some are more oval and the tips of the oval are going to be your stiff sides but um, if you do this enough, you'll develop a feel for the stiff side of the arrow just by rotating it in your hands. And when you get to a certain point, 
you'll feel it. The arrow will want to just spring right back at you. That's very important. That is going to determine the orientation I shoot this arrow. That stiff side is actually going to ride against the side of the bow. So my knock is going to be perpendicular to that stiff side. So when I knock the string, that stiff side is going to be laying on the bow. So I found my stiff side. As I flex it, it just shoots right back into, into me. That's my stiff side. The bow is going to be here. The, bow, the arrow is drawn. Flexes in the bow as it leaves. And accelerates off the bow. Now to help me remember and keep track of things, I'm going to take a mark. 90 degrees to that stiff side. That will simulate the string. Okay. If you can see, I have a little, a little notch cut in there. That's my string. The stiff side would be on this outside, resting on the bow. So when this is loaded into the bow, it'll accelerate out and around the bow very quickly. And I know this is my stiff side, so I'm going to make a mark so I can keep track of that on the side of the arrow. That's going to be the side that rests on the bow. 180 degrees to that is going to be my cock feather on the outside of the bow. So now I have visual rep visual reminders here. I have some notches here. It's going to so when I'm working on this reducing it, I know I can always say okay, this is my stiff side. It's just to help me keep track of things. Now I can continue reducing the overall d spine of this arrow or flex of this arrow and as I reduce wood, I will take another I'll feel it again, but in that orientation that I've established now as as it would initially flex into the bow when it's shot. So I'll reduce wood and flex it again. Okay, it's still a little stiff. That's how I do it. It's all in this orientation now that I've established. Bow side, string, 90 degrees to that, cock feather on the outside. That's how I've come to make my arrows. And I just find that they um, seem to perform better with that stiff side against the bow. It just helps the arrows accelerate off the bow a little nicer. And it, and it also establishes the true flex of that arrow. There's a lot of deviation, like I said, throughout the arrow. But determining that stiff side gives you a good reference point. So I've been working away here for hours reducing these arrow shafts. This is something I'll spend days and days and days doing, if not weeks. Um, going through micro-tuning them, getting them close to how I like them to flex. Establishing that fletching diameter. Establishing that mass on the front end. Um, I wanted to establish that because once I fletch them, I don't want to be ripping my feathers off to reduce them more. I get down to that thickness that I like. Um, like I said, it's usually about a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch down here at the fletch. And um, I've reduced these and get them. I'm getting them pretty close to where they're going to flex. They're close to their final flex. That's by best by feel. The rest is going to be by shooting them to micro tune them. But um. That's where we'll leave off on this video. After this, the next series, I think we'll cut in the knock, fletch these arrows, and start shooting them and micro-tuning them a little bit, and uh, see what kind of tips I want to put on them. All right, thanks for watching.